Let's work for heaven. All the rest is nothing. Welcome my beautiful brothers and sisters connecting from all over Mother Earth. To the portal of the Casa de Dom Ignacio where the current is now flowing from the house of love where the medicine is love from Abidjania in the heart of Brazil connecting us across the miles and we have another spectacular day here in Abidjania sunny deep blue skies reminding us of the protection and love of the mantle of our Divine Mother Mary. And there's fluffy white clouds passing slowly by in remembrance of our impermanence. We are just travellers here on earth and all things pass and all things are impermanent. And we're being held in this majestic high vibration of Mother earth this beautiful green and energy growth is prolific right now we have so much abundance at the end of the rainy season lots of colorful flowers with butterflies flitting everywhere again another reminder of our transformation as we shift dimensions into a whole new earth paradigm of love light so let us settle deeper and deeper into this divine necessary work now wherever you are in the world relax if you're lying down great if you're under a crystal bed super and if you prefer to sit upright as we do here in the current feet firmly on the ground to ground us don't cross your body in any way be open to give and receive and allow this majestic miraculous high vibration to connect us right across the miles flowing fluidly freely and easily this beautiful healing current of love and light. 
and it's very important for us to receive as much as we can and as you give so it will be given you as we close our physical eyes and leave the material world behind with all of its stresses, problems, difficulties. We open our spiritual eyes where we can see beyond appearances all there is. We are reminded again and again that we are spiritual beings having a human experience and not the other way around. We're not the body, we're so much more. The body merely houses our eternal spirits. And we have so much help available to us from beyond the veil, so many entities of light and love. And today is the feast day of one of these beautiful entities of the Casa, Saint Bernadette. Imagine seeing our Blessed Mother not just once, but 18 times. That is the blessing Bernadette Sobrius was given for five months in 1858. Who was she? She was the eldest of nine children from a poverty-stricken family in Lourdes in France. Frail in health, she survived cholera at age 10 and suffered from asthma and other ailments throughout her life. Bernadette's short life was very, very difficult. But she wasn't a miserable girl. She had a deep, simple faith in God, and she didn't mind any of the work she had to do. She couldn't read or write, and between the ages of 12 and 14, she worked as a servant. Around the time of her first communion, she received a vision of the Virgin. And in the following five months, she received 17 more apparitions. Bernadette never claimed it to be Mary, but consistently used the word aquero, which means extreme reverence for a sacred reality. Bernadette asked the lady what her name was many times during her apparitions. According to Bernadette, the lady of her visions was a girl of 16 or 17 who wore a white robe and a blue sash. Yellow roses covered her feet, a large rosary was on her right arm, and she eventually told Bernadette, I am the Immaculate Conception. It was only when the words were explained to her afterwards that Bernadette came to realise who the lady actually was. Bernadette saw the lovely lady again and again. The lovely lady ordered her to dig a hole at the spot. A fresh, cool spring came bubbling up out of the ground. Sick people who bathed in it grew well. Many of the blind could see again. Build here, said the lovely lady, a great church, and tell people to pray and do penance and walk in processions. All of this was done. Soon the wonderful shrine of Lourdes was built, where miracles happen, even to this present day. During her life, Bernadette suffered much physically. She was hounded by the public as well as by civ civic officers until at last she was protected in a convent of nuns where she lived, worked and learned to read and write. Always sick herself and often mistreated by her superiors, she died with a prayer for Mary's age. Her final words were, Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for me, a poor sinner, a poor sinner. She was only 35 years of age and she died of TB. Saint Bernadette's symbol was a rose. It represented the beauty of her actions and the thorns represented the sorrow and pain she faced. She was exhumed three times, and it was claimed that although the crucifix in her hand and her rosary had both oxidised, 
her body appeared incorrupt, preserved from decomposition. This was cited as, as one of the miracles to support her canonization. Millions of people have come to the Marian Shrine of Lourdes and the Spring Bernadette uncovered for healing of body and spirit. But she herself found no relief from ill health there. Bernadette moved through life, guided only by blind faith in things she did not understand, teaching us that we all must do this from time to time. She is a saint of our age. She was just a young girl who saw something amazing and told the truth about it. Hardly anyone believed her at first and people even made life difficult for her and her family because of what she said she saw. But Bernadette never backed down and the truth she told has helped millions of people, even people who live today. Saint Bernard is the patron of the ill, poor, sheep tenders and those ridiculed for their faiths. So we are in great hands with our sister, Saint Bernadette of Lourdes. And we turn to her now and ask for her intercession to help us all carnate and disincarnate in these challenging times on earth. And through the intercession of our Divine Mother Mary, we are her children. As we go on the inner journey, the journey of the heart, to find the peace, the harmony, the tranquility, the faith, the trust, the compassion, the humility, the love, the forgiveness, the joy, the gratitude, the abundance, the awareness deep deep within us and it is within all of us we are divine beings helping us all carnage and disincarnate on our healing journey back home merging into the light out of separation into oneness one heart one soul one light one love one family Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus, the light of the world. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us, your children now and at the hour of our passing. Amen. And as we turn now to our brother Jesus, Prince of Peace, Son of Mary, Son of God. Jesus told us many, many centuries ago that when a few are called in his name, he will be present, trusting the promises of the Christ consciousness. May Christ return to earth. And Jesus gave us all a beautiful gift, bestowing upon his twelve apostles a very high vibration of the Lord's Prayer that has come down to us through the ages, teaching us how to pray, how to surrender to the will of God, how to talk to our divine source, how to forgive ourselves, our brothers and sisters, And how to embrace all of these gifts of creation we have been given. Life itself, this gift from the architect of the cosmos. 
as we walk our paths together, walking each other home. The Lord's Prayer, translated from its original Aramaic, the language of Jesus and Mary. O breathing life, your name shines everywhere. Release a space to plant your presence here. Envisage your I can now. Embody your desire in every light and form. Grow to us this moment's bread and wisdom. Untie the knots of errors binding us as we release the strands we hold of others' faults. Help us not to forget our source. Liberate us from not living in this present moment. From you arises every vision, power and song from gathering to gathering. May our future actions grow from here. Amen.
our Divine Mother, Mary, has made her presence felt down through the centuries, appearing to very simple, humble folk. The little shepherd children in Fatima, simple lady in Medjugorje, in Nock, a small farming community. And these are only the ones that we are really aware of that are famous. And Bernadette was a very sickly humble, peasant, poor girl who couldn't read or write. And God knows everything. During the third apparition in Lourdes, the Virgin spoke to Bernadette for the very first time. saying, what I have to say to you does not have to be written down. Knowing that Bernadette couldn't read or write, Mary wished to communicate with Bernadette in a loving heart-to-heart -heart way. From the very beginning, Bernadette was invited to open the depths of her heart to this message of love. And Bernadette was overwhelmed by the second statement of the Virgin Mary when she said, Would you be so kind as to come here for 15 days? Bernadette was treated terribly by her peers and especially with these apparitions she was ridiculed and investigated and treated very very badly and this is the first time that Bernadette was ever addressed in a formal way she felt that she was respected and loved as a person in her own right And this teaches us that we are all worthy of respect in the eyes of God because he loves each and every one of us as if there was only one of us. We're all children of God. No exceptions. We all matter in the eyes of our Creator. And the third statement of the Virgin, which was extremely poignant, when she said to Bernadette, I do not promise to make you happy in this world, but in the next. God did not promise us that this human journey would be easy. God promised us it would be worth it. So let us pray with open hearts, trustingly, without ceasing. Happily, joyfully, knowing that our prayers are being answered always and in all ways through the intercession of our sister, Saint Bernadette. Dear Bernadette, teach us to serve and to pray. In Lourdes, you experience the joys and trials 
of family life. You saw Mary 18 times at the rock. You called the sinners to penance, the pilgrims to come in procession. You reported the name of Mary, the Immaculate Conception. You desired ardently to receive the body of the Lord and to live off it. You knew shame and suspicion, mockery and humiliation. You bore witness to what you saw and believed with such determination. You answered the call of the Lord.